I'm Lurie Ducek, a Regional Information Officer with the Emergency Operations Centre and I'm joined today by Daniel Klein, he's the Incident Commander working on the St. Mary's River Fire. It is Sunday, July 23rd, we're filming this at 11am and I'm very grateful for your time again this morning. Yeah. Just wanted to bring the fire front to all of you in a different way, so I'll turn things over to you and just maybe you can let us know kind of the picture in the last 24 hours. Sure, yeah, so I won't do the, the same extent of updating today, I'm just going to talk about the last 24 hours on the fire. Uh, so we had strong winds from the southwest west, uh, pushing towards the northeast through yesterday afternoon. That was expected weather for the incident. Uh, where we continued to get challenged was up in the northeast corner, uh, close to the LD Ranch Road where it ties down onto the flats and into the Kootenai River. Uh, we did have uh, a couple small spot fires from that wind uh, get over our machine line. Uh, but crews uh, with support from aviation and structure protection staff were able to get around some of those spot fires and tie them back into our existing control lines. Uh, so great work from the crews in, in controlling those through peak burning yesterday. Um, <clears throat> that was our, our major challenge and we managed to hold there last night. Uh, we continue to, to hold all the way down to Francis Lake over to Adrian Lake and down all the way to the airport. Uh, again, we're holding, that, that's not containment, just given expected wind, uh, how hot, dry um, that the conditions are and how receptive the fuels are to spot fires. Uh, we need to, to put in a lot more work and, and get through these next couple periods of peak burning uh, before we're, we're kind of out of out of being in holding. So uh, we are expecting stronger southwest winds today, even stronger southwest winds coming in tomorrow. Uh, <clears throat> so we're, we're very well resourced and vigilant on the north end of the fire. We have crews spread out, we have heavy equipment in place, we have aviation in place, ready to respond to any spots that may get out of our containment lines. So I think that's one of the things that I've really learned through the process of this fire is the important work that's also being done when people don't see it. In the daytime yeah. we can see the resources and um, yeah. but overnight you've got some resources on the ground that are doing really important work and maybe you can just speak to the fact that they are working through the night on yeah. this fire. Totally. Yeah. Uh, we have 24 hour coverage um, from BC wildfire crews, uh, structure protection staff. Obviously we can't fly aviation at night. Uh, but and then we also have equipment on standby through the overnight period. They are continuing to, to monitor this line and make sure that any spot fires that we find are actioned immediately. Spot fires that we're getting over the line are, are growing uh, aggressively really quickly. If we don't get on them right away, uh, then we're at the risk of losing our containment. And that is our main focus for the next couple days. On that, um, <clears throat> we are doing uh, small-scale planned ignitions of any pockets of, of green fuel, unburnt fuel, that are within our control lines. If we don't do planned ignitions and consume that fuel, we run the risk of wind coming in, sparking up those pockets of green fuel, and then spotting over our line. Um, so if you're seeing little pockets of smoke, that's planned ignitions, that's intentional. We're needing to get in there, burn those pockets out, and, and make sure that we're not running the risk of fire spotting over the edge. And I think that's one of the important messages for people as well with evacuation alerts having been issued for several of the past few days. This remains an active fire. Yeah. You're giving it everything you've got, but there is still potential and certainly with the weather conditions that we're seeing, it's important for people to remain vigilant and to be yeah. aware that there is still great potential in this fire. So we need to make sure that we are being aware and prepared and that you are doing everything you can to, to keep things in check here. Yeah. For sure. And uh, so, yeah, the key things is we didn't see any growth yesterday um, and, and we are just continuing to be vigilant with spots, make sure that we're burning out or doing planned ignitions for any small scale green pockets of unburnt fuel and then just, put, you know, continuing to monitor. We have crews that are pushing in and bolstering those control lines with water uh, and equipment and we will just continue to do that uh, as long as we need to to get out of these periods of high wind um, and some of the weather that we're expecting over the next couple of days. And quite possibly people could see some things kick up during those sort of peak burning hours between about 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. Yeah. as conditions get hottest and driest. So that's something that is generally anticipated certainly with the weather conditions we have coming in. Yeah, 100%. And uh, you know a couple uh, broader notes, 
We are working with airport authorities to uh, reduce flight restrictions northbound of the airport currently, uh, you know, to try and accommodate northbound traffic and, and reduce the, the ongoing impacts to, to airports and air travel. So that's ongoing right now. That's something that's a, that's a number one priority for us um, so that we no longer kind of impact um, the, the Canadian Rockies Airport. So that's ongoing and, and just know that, that uh, it's a priority for us. Super. So. And the staff at the airport are doing a good job of trying to make yeah. sure that there's communication around that. We are letting people know the airport is open, flights are landing and taking off, but it is affecting some flights. And that's obviously because there is a fire in the near proximity. So we just encourage people to make sure they're checking their flight schedules frequently. And it's great to hear that you're working to, to try to help make things as smooth as possible for travelers there. Yeah. So great. anything else you wanted to add today? No, I, I would just add, we, we did add area alerts, uh, so quite extensively up to Wassa over to Tata Creek and just cover Covering the north end of the corridor that is, um, you know, north of this incident, we do that out of an abundance of precaution, given the current weather we're facing uh, and and fuel conditions, and just not wanting to run the risk of not having people prepared uh, and ready to kind of exit the area um, if if things take a turn for the worse. So we we do that. Please respect that. It's it's for forward planning out of an abundance of precaution. Well, and the important thing about an evacuation alert is that piece of time. So um, it is the time if you are an evacuation alert to make sure that you are prepared and you are aware and you're following the latest information and that you are ready to go on a moment's notice should conditions change. So great sources of information for you. The BC Wildfire website, Wildfire of Note, on this particular fire is updated frequently throughout the day. It's the best source of up-to-date information. We're doing our best to bring things to you as we can. And of course, through the Regional District of East Kootenay, if you don't have access to online resources throughout the day we do have an information line at 250-426-2188 and we can give you the latest information as well so i'd like to thank you for your time today and uh, certainly look forward to getting an update and, and thanks again to you and all of your crews um, for the tremendous work that is going into this fire and on behalf of all of the residents of our region of course yeah we're happy to help thanks thank you